Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review. First of all, I'd like to apologise for sounding dog rough. I am full of cold, the joys of having germ ridden children. Uh, in today's video, thanks to the mighty team over at Robot Kingdom, we're taking a look at the ZV-02 Flash by Zeta Toys. This is their take on the Bumblebee movie Blitzwing. If you order the box, make sure you get this package that comes with it. If you don't receive this, then your figure will be uh, missing pieces. This is, of course, the head and the wing set that makes it uh, screen accurate, let's say. Without this, there's definitely no copyright infringement because it looks very different indeed. Now, I've already added the wings, but as you can see, he doesn't actually come with a head. It's kind of like a Gundam style section underneath so we get the head in the accessory bag uh, which is included within that set as well as those wings we get the various different hand accessories and that cannon yeah, you just pop those hands off it's pegged on and you just slide the weapons on we actually get a nice big display base in here which can also double up as a carry case for the accessories just opens up and then we have a really nice heavy duty stand piece to stand him up in his jet and in his bot mode really nicely done and then we get the small switch for the head and we get those small circuit LEDs so we can place the LED light in his head I believe these take a G1 batteries and here we have him on the turntable alongside his uh, competition I'll say competition it's basically designed on the older version of the Zeta design. It was sold on, make a little bit of money whilst they make this version. Um, very similar, but definitely not the same. And Zeta have gone for the, uh, we're gonna avoid copyright infringement. The other version, <laughs> not so much. Um, they don't seem to be worried about anything flagging up there, but uh, each to their own. Uh, Zeta is slightly taller, as you can see and the paint is definitely cleaner it's definitely not got that kind of wash all the way over it there's is some form of wash on it but it is just not the same as what we have on this uh, other version it's kind of a much darker zeta definitely holds together better now as well as realized i haven't uh, rectified my hip skirts on zeta by but he definitely holds together a lot nicer, uh, strikes a pose better, the joints are a lot tighter. He's a much heavier figure. I'll actually weigh these afterwards, but uh, overall, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with whichever route you took. But uh, personally, just for stability and how he holds together, I think Zeta wins this one. Now, there are definitely parts that I prefer one over the other. Uh, to be honest with you, I prefer the shoulder mounts on this version uh, these definitely stay up a lot better these are quite loose on the zeta that's nothing a little bit of kiki won't fix also the head uh, it's i tried the ag1 and ended up having to use something a lot smaller because uh, the battery just didn't fit in the little mounts uh, the mount itself actually split at the sides so i've had to use some slightly smaller batteries i can't even see the numbers on them they're so small but if anybody does manage to find out what battery that is actually is that fits in these then i'll uh, pin your comment to the top of the comments thread on this video but i mean there's definitely a lot going for both figures but i still stand by that i prefer my zeta i mean zeta you can pick up and play with he's a big solid lump this one just doesn't really stay how you want him to he looks the part but it's just that little bit of extra de niro that they skipped on production that really does make the difference between these two i mean don't get me wrong the paint and the uh like the panel lining etc on this is absolutely superb but <laughs> zeta's holds together and here we have him alongside the 3a prime 3AB and the Zeta B. Uh, definitely a much better scale 
in my opinion. It's not a very flattering angle I've got him up there. It makes him look like he's got a very kind of telegraphic neck, but he doesn't. He is uh, very much as he should be. But yeah, that's definitely, in my opinion, especially going by my Mike Lauber scale chart, uh, that scales pretty darn perfectly. Now I'm getting up close and personal. Loving that sculpt on the head there. His eyes really look like they're burning, don't they? Love the detail on that canopy. And you've got that gold speckled paint on the chest. Got all of this detail in here. Got those vents. Kind of a nice grubby off-white on everything there nothing's really pristine down to the legs a lot of heft in these feet a lot of die cast in there actually got some uh, light panel sections spaces for the lights to go in the back of these thrusters as well i believe really beautiful piece especially considering that it transforms as well now, as it comes out of the box, let's just remove this piece. This will be up. Uh, these won't be attached. You have to attach those yourself. And uh, this piece is kind of untapped. It's out, and this is flat. You need to make sure that you pull this up and push these in so it's on this hinge here. And then it just tabs in behind this. So this locks into here, and this locks into the front panel here. And then you can uh, place your wings together and pop those on articulation wise. Head can look up, down, left and right. We can tilt quizzically side to side. Arms can come forwards, backwards, out to the side. This does seem to want to pop off that chest joint when I do that shoulder. There we go. This is on a separate hinge as well. Upper shoulder rotation, we've got a double jointed bend on these elbows. Wrists are articulated as well, obviously I've taken those off. There's die cast in these arms as well. I love just the attention to detail. I like these hands. Uh, the waist does rotate, it rotates underneath where everything's going on. And we've got legs that come forwards with a spring-loaded hinge here. So it gives us more range, come out to the side like so. No ratchet joints in there, but it's a nice tight joint nonetheless. Upper thigh rotation and a double jointed bend on that knee. Although the armor on the side does hinder that secondary bend slightly and we've got pivot and we've got some up and down on those feet to get the full use of those legs you really kind of need to remove these rocket tabs from the back there i mean if you have them mounted like so then you could probably get away with it but they're only a little added on extra anyway uh, to get that full range you just need to remove those up so then you can get both those bends on the knee something about him isn't there when you get the little bit of dynamic range on those legs move the waist slightly he really does kind of leap out gorgeous looking piece and to get blitzwing transformed back up you need to just unplug these additional accessories now we need to pop his hands back on rotate the lower forearms this back section opens up the rocket tab comes in and slides in and then this piece rocks up and then we can close this panel back off again these shoulder tabs are tabbed in at two points so is at the back here using that tab at the front here using this one need to fully extend those so again on this side untab those in the two points so untab from the front and then from the back 
like this. Uh, this panel here just untabs like so. Pulling this back panel piece down. There we go, it's just gonna drop. These are gonna come upwards as this goes down. And bring those up into the center. And then just move these out so this can flop down like so. Open up these panels. That was the purpose of this video, if we could pretend that I actually had these out in the first place, which I didn't. Uh, we just need to pop those back in and this bit is gonna kind of just push out of the way. That's like the turbine sections, which uh, in turn, kind of lift up and come up on this hinge. This comes all the way up and then that's gonna come down and that's gonna come down like this and then just push in and looking on the underside these come down and down like this uh, this here is going to come around and this comes around they just untab from this latch just here the nose cone opens up So this piece is going to flip, move the arm out of the way so we've got room to work with. Lift this section out of the torso, come on, out you come, like so. And then this piece here should also lift out. There we go, which separates the center half so much going on here. Your head, come up, push, and as we push, this is going to come down. So the head is now at the base here. This opens up. There's a nose cone in here, which we can bring outwards and then we can just close that piece back off these line up this is going to come up like so this is going to come around this is then going to come in to the void between the two and with a little bit of energy on and a lot of luck. These should all tab in together, forming the top of the jet. Rotate these shoulders up and over, and this shoulder up and over. So we've got access to the underside Plug this piece in, this is going to rotate, come around, slide, and tab into the side of the jet. Do the same with this side, bring this around, rotate that, push it in, slide, push, and compress, and that all stows away in there wonderfully. Really nice fit. This tab lifts up. And these are gonna unlatch. So it's the latch is here. Bring that down. So it opens up the entire lower arm. Basically, what we need to do, you need to flatten this piece, and this is gonna roll. And as it rolls, it's going to rotate through the void, like so. And as that comes through, this is gonna come up like this and in to 
to the arm. This rotates so the inner arm is facing like so. You can then straighten off this tab here. And then this is going to come back up and collapse. And this is designed to go over like so. And it's this hinge here that you're looking at. So you've got the circle here and it goes forward and up like that to the angle so that when you drop those back, they'll form the side pods on the jet. Uh, you then want to move the upper torso piece around like this. Now I've just taken this wing off so you can actually see what we're doing here. You don't have to take them off for the transformation, although I actually find it a lot easier. You want to open up the backs of these legs and you want to extend those pieces out. There's going to form part of the side of the jet. And then these panels at the base of the leg, these are going to open up as well. This bit here is very, very similar to the other transformation, only it's a little bit more refined in my opinion. This panel on the back of the foot, which forms the heel spur, that's going to come up and uh, compress. This piece here is going to come up and that's going to rotate around and then this is going to extend outwards. Cool. This part past the foot is going to come up. This is going to come down. That's uh, going to end up going into the void in the leg. Uh, we just need to make sure we get all of these sections out first. So this is going to come up like so. Bring this piece out and around. This is going to go to the side of that jet piece. This can then come back in. So again, on this side, move this one over to one side so we can bring this panel down. This is all going to open up. Oh, this one's just uh, tabbed on there. There's nothing to hold that one in. There we go, just friction. This opens up. This here is going to come up. And that's going to go, which way are we going? We're going to go this way, like that. This comes all the way around and flips on to the inside. This is then going to come up and this goes the other side of here. So that when this forms the rear, uh, this is going to be on the right side. So, so let's bend this one up and down and out of the way. So we've got room to work with. And then this way, go like this. This is going to roll on this rotating hinge and slide further down the leg. This here comes up, pushes and tabs in. Uh, this one needs to go do, 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 do. and it just tucks in, pushes in and locks into here and that's in turn going to tab into the back of this leg. Make sure that this is nice and straight like so. And this is then going to collapse into here, tabbing in at both of those points there. And there, this is going to come up. This compresses down into that void, and this comes up and 
tabs in. And then remembering to bring this panel out from underneath, like so. You can then rock this all the way forwards so that it matches up here. And on the underside, just here. And then just go around and make sure all of these are tabbed in correctly. Bring the arms under making sure that they sit on the inside of this lip. They are going to slide in to the void in the legs. He says, so when the hands are in, they're tucked down facing downwards so they don't get in the way of the landing gear. Uh, the next task is just to peg all of these top pieces together. And with all these tabbed in nicely, this bottom panel folds downwards. Again, I've just taken off the wings so you can see what you're doing. These are gonna tab in here and it pushes together here and here. I'll do this with the wings off as well so you can see uh, basically these are going to rotate around. That's going to get caught there, isn't it? This piece is attached to this panel here. So it's this outer piece which rotates. So this comes up, this comes up, this comes out like this. It's going to come up. It's going to come all the way up like this. There we go. And then this is going to come all the way onto the end. And then this can just a tab in to the side. Like I said, you can do it whilst it's attached. And then where that wing comes down, this is going to slide in to those grooves just on the other side of the panel. See there's a square and a circular tab and then that, that forms the wings. We then have some landing gear at the front and we have some outside here as so, well. They can just flip up. Oh, he says, God, that one's a bit stiff. There we go. Got a tab on here for the ammunition that can come on like this. And there's actually a space on the underside for that ginormous extra rocket, extra bomb to drop. So there we go, it's all starting to kind of be loaded up and the wheels are just big enough to avoid any clearance issues. So there we have him fully transformed up into his vehicle mode. That's a really nice jet mode. I like how that's come out. It's very close to his screen model. In my opinion, I haven't just quite got those tail fins sitting correctly, have I? But I like the fact that we can have the additional ammunition underneath as well as that kind of missile. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, See if you're going to want the correct decals, then you may have to go somewhere like Toy Hacks and see if they do a kit for this, which I'm sure they will. That's the sort of thing that they do. But this is a really nice looking piece. I'm genuinely very impressed with it. Zeta have done an amazing job. It is better by far in comparison to their version one that they sold on. Uh, I'm glad they made that decision because this really is a beautiful little jet it's a good looking jet as well isn't it uh, really didn't get enough screen time in its jet mode in the movie i don't think i do love me some jet formers uh, again there's still that argument whether or not this should ever have been blitzwing whether they should have stuck with this being a star scream just due to that awesome star scream color scheme but that's another argument in itself as far as jet modes go this is pretty darn 
Sublime. And finally, if you wanna mount him on the display stand, move that center rocket to these holes at the front here. So you've got space at the rear. And then we have him on his base. Absolutely love this. I actually think the vehicle mode is probably nicer than its counterpart as well. Just sheerly because things tab in better and it holds together better. For quick comparison, alongside Mechanical Alliance version. As you can see, yeah, this one does have all of those extra details and decals, per, uh, I don't know, it's nice, they're both nice, but this was just such a mission to get transformed and get things to hold into place. Whereas the Zeta, uh, when you get the hang of it, it is absolutely solid. I mean, even now, things just aren't having in where they should. I'm not gonna force them. But uh, yeah, if I was to pick between the two, there is a price difference. Mechanical Alliance is cheaper, and that does show. In my opinion, that comes across. If I have to get rid of one, Mechanical Alliance will be the one to go. Of course, I just chucked in the Transart Bumblebee there as well, so you can see how that fares. This is a really nice chunk of a jet. Paint probably isn't as nice. I like all those decals on the other one. But that being said, nothing a little bit of toy hacks labels can't fix. But for me, this is kind of the definitive transforming movie versus Blitzwing. Thanks again to Robot Kingdom for making this review possible. I hope you found it useful. If you have, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, share and subscribe. If you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notifications when all my new content comes up. Huge shout out to all of my Patreons for making these reviews possible. And until next time, for myself and Zeta Toys ZV-02, flash a good.